Hey guys, what's up? So normally I bring you guys a video on the viability rankings update, but right now I'm actually going to be doing the post while I get you guys in the video. So what happened was we just did all of our voting. Um, we had a John W. the viability ranking council and we voted on a bunch of things, yada, yada, yada. And these are the results of the vote. So I'm just going to go down the list real quick and then we'll work on um, writing all that out because we're going to write out a little description for each one of them and then I'm going to post them in the form so you guys can just see a little inside, behind the scenes, little... Um, my going through that whole process. So first and foremost, Volcarona moved from A to A+. Plus. Let's write about that. So Volcarona proved itself a great option in the current metagame due to its ability to defeat potential checks and counters with a varied assortment of quiver and variants. So basically what I'm trying to say is that Volcarona has a couple different sets that are able to circumvent counterplay. For example, Safeguard lets you set up on Chansey and Blue Sea with Toxic or Thunder Wave, and then you're able to ultimately beat them. Whereas Psychic helps with things like Toxpex and Como, which could otherwise be problematic. Substitute is really good for things like especially defensive Mandibuzz with Knockoff or Foul Plays to only attack, whereas um, Giga Drain helps for things like Clear Smog, Toxic, Gastrodon. So yeah, that's a great way to put it. Volcorn improved itself a great option in the current metagame due to its ability to defeat potential checks and counters with a varied assortment of quiver dance sets. This underspoken versus this understated versatility versatility allows for it to get around normal stops to hit. For example, safeguard helps with Blissey and Psychic helps with Toxicus. This allows for Volcarona to be a menace to opposing teams at a special win condition. So yeah, I basically just explained that and outlined it and put it into words. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. And you guys can get to see my little insight on each and every Pokemon, why it might be rising up or why it might be dropping down. So next up, we're going to have Corviknight. It went from A- to A+. Plus, so... Corviknight initially was held back a lot by Mandibuzz, but now in this metagame, especially due to the stall being so prominent, Corviknight actually got a lot better. Corviknight is a staple on common stall teams. It is able to wall, wall top options offensively, like Excadrill and Rillaboom, and Pressure is a super practical ability. This allows for it to take back the title of top defog user in the metagame. Previously, Mandibuzz was seen as superior due to how well it did against Wicked Blow and Cinderace, but now the tier being freed up a bit plays into the hand of Corviknight which sees much more usage now. So what I'm trying to say basically is that we just saw a huge uptick in Corviknight usage after previously Mandibuzz was the top dog as a defog, or I guess you could say the top bird. So nowadays pressure is great for you know, long-term games. Body press helps you check things like Bisharp, Extra Drill, um, et cetera. Whereas on the, um, on the offensive end, you could also defeat down Rillaboom with Brave Bird or just, you know, wall grass attacks, yeah. It's really good anti has measure against things like Kip Howdon too. So yeah, let me just reread it real quick. Corviknight is a staple on common stall teams. It's able to wall top offensive op top options offensively like x and Rillaboom. And Pressure is a super practical ability. This allows for it to take back the title of top defog user in the metagame. Previously, Mandibuzz was seen as superior, as, as more common. More common and perhaps practical on balance builds. Yeah, that's a better way to put it. Due to how well it did against Wicked Blow, Urshifu, and Cinderace not being weak to Pyro Blob. Probably not grammatically correct, but that's fine. But now the tier being freed up a bit plays into the hand of, into the uh, wing of Corviknight. It's in the wing. No, hold up, let me do a little plan words here. Wing. There we go. Oh, I got the little space. No. Uh, there we go. A little perfectionist stuff here, which sees more usage now because of all of this. All right, Rillaboom. Rillaboom is a great option on hyper offensive teams due to having strong priority, being able to deter 
occur opposing offensive archetypes such as rain and also giving grassy terrain support that helps for options like Pelucha. On top of this, it is a great soft check to many things on balance teams and can function as a breaker with choice band or a sweeper with swords. All things considered, Rillaboom is now one of the metagame's best offensive options. So yeah, Rillaboom is next off, and basically I'm just trying to outline how Rillaboom has become one of the best Pokemon in the metagame. Not metagame, oh no 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 no. Meta games, all right, there we go. So yeah, Grassy Train is super practical. You're seeing a lot of these teams with Halucha on Hyper Offense, some that I've even used on the ladder, really come, but also it fits well into balance teams. It does really nicely with things like Magnezone too. Obviously it has its checks and counters, but the sheer support development of it goes a long way in my eyes. And overall, I think Rillaboom is just phenomenal in this metagame, so I definitely would try that out too. All right, next up we have Kyurem. Kyurem, much like Corviknight, greatly appreciates the ability pressure. It has recently been running a mixed sub roost set that has been a corner zone of some stall teams. It is able to waste lots of PP and force progress like nothing else. In addition, the choice specs set is slowly picking back up in usage, which is another reason for it moving up a whole two sub ranks. Cause yeah, this went from B plus to A. So basically Kyurem is a great option right now. We're seeing a set with Substitute, Roost, Icicle Spear, and Freeze Dry. Icicle Spear is 48 PP and it does a lot to things like Blissey and Chansey. Especially if you get four or five hits. It's just really great. And sub Roost wastes so much PP. It's actually an amazingly bulky naturally too. Oh, uh, finally, phenomenal natural bulk, natural nature bulk, natural bulk paired with heavy booty boots goes a long way for the metagame's favorite ice type. Yep, okay, so yeah, that about sums it up. Specs is good, but sub reduced is also good and more common right now. It does really well on stall teams and even fits on a select number of balanced teams. I definitely would advise trying that out. And let me know what you think of it. All right, next up we have Skarmory. Skarmory, Skarmory is finally picking up as a lot of teams are electing to forego focusing on hazard removal and instead place an emphasis on setting up their own entry hazards. Skarmory does a great job setting spikes up and is also able to wall a similar assortment of Pokemon to the aforementioned Corviknight. Drill, Exadrill, the Boom, and the Sharp to name a few. So yeah, it's kind of like Corviknight Light. It doesn't have pressure. It doesn't. It doesn't really use Defog too well, but it has Spikes plus Toxic, which go a long way. It's also, its body press is super strong. It really is only running physically defensive sets, but still, a lot of teams basically they run a lot of boot users or magic guard users, you know, ways to not mind hazards, and then they just want to get spikes on both sides of the field, so they run spike Skarmory without, to say, something like Defog Corviknight. And that goes a very long way in the metagame right now. I definitely would advise trying that out as well. All right, next up we have Magnezone, and it looks like we're getting, um, we're about halfway through, so you, we're not going to write as much description for the Pokemon that are like, Say Ditto. Well, Ditto. Okay, Ditto is probably one that's important because that raised two. But like, let's say a Hatterene. Like, here, let's go to Hatterene for a second. Hatterene's come mind three attacks set during draining kiss for recovery has been doing well in the meta game, making progress progress via hazard setting challenging for bulkier teams and also posing as an efficient win condition that annoys many balance builds. Yeah, and like example, that's basically just a long sentence summing up what it does. 
So we're not actually going into the same level of detail because we can't because Pokemon being ranked in C just don't have as large of a sample size, as large of really like a base that is valuing their presence in the metagame, if you will, as compared to something like, say, Curum in A, or even Skarmory in A-, minus. not to mention a Pokemon even rank higher. So yeah, um, all right, now let's go back to Magnezone. Magnezone is finally breaking out into the metagame, much like everyone's favorite YouTuber, Finchinator. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing this. I'm so... Meta gay. No, no, no. Meta game. I did not mean that typo, guys. That's completely accidental. My bad on that. Um, oh, and while, while we're talking about this, there's something that really annoyed me today. Um, so I follow baseball. I know a lot of you guys don't, but there was this broadcaster for the Reds on Fox Sports who said uh, a homophobic slur on the broadcast, and I believe he's getting fired, thankfully, but that's just so messed up, like, saying that in front of a public audience. Maybe he, he apparently he didn't think he was being, um, he was being, he was on live TV, it was like a hot mic that was, like, between commercials, but still, like, saying anything like that is just so unacceptable, so definitely, uh, don't, don't do that, guys. Um, we accept everyone on my channel, and I just want y'all to know that, that's really important to me, so yeah. Um, obviously didn't tend that typo, but sorry about that, my fault entirely. Anyway, much like everyone's favorite YouTuber, Finchinator, predicted Magnezone picked up in usage upon the recent pins. Specs Analytic is a potent special attacker, but but magnet pull sets are also seen as very practical options due to Skarmory and Corviknight surging in usage it pairs well with many Pokemon that struggle against those steel types. So yeah, Magnezone has like two different modes. It could run uh, sort of like a Magnapol spec set or even Magnapol like sub body press kind of set or even Scarf we've seen once or twice and Trap Corbinate and Skarmory with those or Specs Analytic and Functions more of a breaker. Specs Analytic is so good against all teams that lack a ground type, to the point where I ran Stunfisk against all recently in Quagsire, so that about sums that up. But yeah, yeah that aside, it's just it's a really solid practical option right now. I definitely wouldn't try out Magnezone. It's not amazing, but it's still pretty good. Um, so can pretty good. Togekiss is another strong special attacker, being the nasty plot variants do well against bulkier teams, whereas Choice Scarf can put a dent in offensive teams. Overall, Togekiss is an annoying Pokemon to face, but besides from flinching antics, it is still a practical option due to its very typing helping against the Shifu and its it's and the various sets it runs doing well against common structures. Yeah, let's go with that. Basically, in my eyes, um, flinching is that a report? Yeah, it is a word. Okay, I was gonna say, whoa, why is that right? I just type out there, but anyway, basically, um, the ability to run Scarf Tokus against like hyper offensive teams is really great, especially with Megarnagon. So you just air slash through some of them, especially if lead extra drill goes down. I mean, some runs there are aura, but that's easy to chip down in flamethrowers doing like 40 45 anyway. And if you're in Dazzling Gleam, it's too a clean. Um, and on top of that, the uh, Nasty Plot plus Heal Boss that does really well against bulky teams, specifically stall teams. It could potentially even flinch out down a wear Pokemon. And if they don't have something like a Rhyperior or a Stunfist, which I've ran both of again for Magnezone and Volt Switch Absorption, then it's going to be tough. So yeah, I think it goes a long way there as well. Crawdon. Is surging as a physically offensive breaker in the metagame. The life orb three attacks swords and variant takes advantage fully of the dual stab combination that Crodon has, as well as adaptability and some strong. As well as adaptability and priority aqua jet. It is oftentimes able to at least force a kill, but potentially getting multiple against more passive teams. Yeah, that sums up Crowdon pretty well. It's a great option right now, but it's only gonna like thrive against 
like more off bulky teams because he's gonna get in more more times. But you could still like revenge skill or we can Zara Aura or a Vol or a Volcarona or an Exadrill. And so you know, what are we Pokemon on offensive teams? So that goes a long way. Even without Corona on the tier, I'd say it goes a long way. Especially because when Corona was in when Cinderace was in the tier. Sorry, 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 sorry. When, when Cinderace was in the tier, because you could revenge kill that with Aquajet, of course. But even that aside. When Cinderace was in the tier, Magirna was also in the tier. Magirna definitely held it back because he's able to stomach even a plus two life orb adamant um, Aqua Jet with yeast. So, yeah. Anyway, Aegis Slash is seeing more usage as a breaker with choice sex and spell tag, oftentimes running Shadow Ball in close combat to help make it a mixed breaker against common bulky. Course. This Age of Slash faces lots of competition from other steel types, but it has a nice place offensively right now. Yeah, I think that's the best way to sum it up. So basically, people using like Shadow Ball, Flash Cannon, Close Combat, Shadow Sneak, Slash King Shield, and that's a really solid set right now. I'd say it does great against bulky teams. It's able to force you know recovers and stuff like that, but. You can't really do a ton with it, I guess. It's, it's still limited, but I like what it does. I definitely would try it out if I were you guys. But yeah, anyway, um, ditto. Ditto is used on stall teams to center, to revenge, kill certain offensive Pokemon, and give infinite PP on repeat against opposing stall. I don't know why I capitalized stall here. Um, it has surged in usage and reliability over the course of Ulti due to this, and we expect to see even more of it in the future. So enjoy everyone's favorite little mischievous blob Pokemon thriving in the super healthy OU metagame. I'm going to be deleting that. <laughs> I'm deleting that last clause, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll delete that, but uh, that's kind of what I, I feel. But anyway, so yeah, Ditto's used on stall teams, able to revenge kill certain Pokemon, give instant PP, and that goes a long way. Um, Scizor is a great anti-offense option and practical check to Rillaboom and Kyurem. For more offensive builds, it goes a long way with swords, dance, and life for powering up a boosted and already boosted technician stab, bullet, punch, and knock off. This allows for Scizor to be a sweeper with some utility as well. It does face stiff competition with other steel types such as the aforementioned Aegis Slash and the Bird in the Flying Steel duo, but on the right offensive build it can be a satisfactory option. So basically, on more offensive teams, people are using Swords and Scissor, which is something I brought up in my underrated Pokemon video. And those teams are really doing well with Swords Dance plus Bullet Punch plus Quick Attack or Roost or Dual Wing Beat or whatever they want to use. I prefer Roost because you beat Corviknight and Skarmory Wet Way plus knockoffs. Yeah, you just Swords Dance up a lot and it'll break things down that aren't like Hayes, his defense defensive toxic pretty much. So yeah, it goes a long way, I'd say. Uh, and it's great against Charm so long as it doesn't get frozen. And also does well against Rillaboom too. Paulucha is a great win condition on Hyper teams when paired alongside grassy terrain Rillaboom it is able to use grassy seed to activate unburden and boost damage this also it has a nice um, choice of fourth move to help it generate openings to sweep with substitute doing particularly well against common defensive options like 
Toxic and Toxic to pout on. Yep, okay, that's perfect. Okay, yeah, that works. Um, Toxic Packs, sweet. Status inducing brass type and Toxic Pout on. Yeah, okay. Activate this type of there, but basically, Halucha plus Rillaboom points really nice score, and I like subsets with the EVs to the Toxic Skull Bind sub. I'm able to set up on that, set up on um, grass types like, you know, Tangrowth. And also able to set up in Toxic Powder. And that just goes a long way in this metagame right now. So yeah, it's pretty great. Next up, we have Necrozma. Um, Meteor, Beam, Plus Power, Herb, Necrozma is a legitimate offensive threat and can either pose as a win condition with Rock Polish or a Stealth Rock Setter in the earlier game. With strong psychic stab and coverage like heat wave, this makes Necrozma an underrated offensive option on this special end. Yeah, so Necrozma is an underrated new Pokemon. Meteor Beam plus Power Herb goes a long way, especially because it's able to lure in things like Mandibuzz. Do you know offensive threat? Lure in things like Mandibuzz. In particular, yeah, and he weighs great for seal types, uh, photon geyser, or slash like for rock possibly you can hit chance and blissey can go a long way as well. Slash, I keep in mind with plus one from meteor beam actually going to be doing quite a bit, especially the blissey. So, yeah, I definitely would try that out there. Um, toxicity with drain, punch, and shift gear is able to normal counterplay, such as blissey and Excadrill from safely defeating it. While Toxtricity is still frail and does not do much defensively besides checking a Fable and Oxifex, it still can do a lot to bulkier teams offensively and potentially clean up opposing offense with a timely Shift gear. So yeah, shift gear, drain punch, toxicity is pretty much the wave on toxicity. It's really solid. Unfortunately, in some games it's kind of useless. So I don't really love it on like a consistent basis, but I think in the right context it can go a long way. So I definitely would try that out as well. Using Galar is a nice the option with a disruptive ability and the defensive presence that it brings to the table can help tie teams together, especially if they struggle against Rillaboom and Rishifu. Yeah, um, Weezing Galar is another thing that's rising in viability recently. It's okay. It's really cool neutralizing gas enables some certain interactions that go a long way, but also on top of that, I feel as if um, Weezing is just a great Check the Urshifu lacking Iron Head and Rillaboom lacking High Horsepower. So yeah, I definitely tried that out as well. And Dracozole mixed set is quite hard to switch into. It was used a couple of times later in World Cup and recently on the OLT ladder. While it does not have much defensive use, it is able to dish out damage and when paired with teleport, it is able to get in safely enough to justify use of it. So we decided to rank it. Yeah, basically it wasn't ranked before. Dracozolt was a pretty poor Pokemon out of the gate, but with the advent, the invention of the Mixa, Draco, Meteor, Fire Blast, Bolt Beak, Substitute with Life Orb, you can run another move for Substitute as well if you want. It actually has come a long way. So it's able to things like a Powdown with Draco Meteor, Fire Thorn with Fire Blast, and just Bolt Beak the rest of the zero pretty much. It's pretty great. I definitely try it out. Definitely check out the video I used showcasing it. But with that said, those are all the Pokemon that um, rose. So let's check out what the post looks like now. Um, yeah, it's just my justification going for every single one of them. Yup, yup, yup. Okay, perfect. Yup, so now we're going to discuss all the drops really quickly. Let me just check where we're at. We're only at 24 minutes. All right, let me pause this real quick, then we'll get into the drops. 
All right, we're back, guys. Now we're gonna be going into the drop. So yeah, Mandibuzz went from A plus to A. Slowbro went from A to A minus. Rotom Heat went from A to A minus as well. Chansey from B to B minus really bottomed me out. Marrow Lola finally fell off from B to C plus. Rotom Wash from B minus to C plus in the last, but certainly not least, everyone's favorite normal type from the past, I guess. Some people like, like Chansey more, I don't know, whatever. I had to give it some title. Snorlax went from C to C minus, just barely hanging on to the last shred of I, but I wouldn't really use it. But hey, it's drawn. Anyway, Mandibuzz started off as a premier defog option, but recently fell off a bit due to Pokemon like Clefable, surging as stealth, rock setters, and an abundance of toxic users like Skarmory and Hippowdon setting up hazards as well. In addition, Corviknight has quickly urged to the top of the metagame, leaving Mandibuzz at the leaving Mandibuzz as a secondary T5 option. It still does well against the Laboom and Excadrill while resisting resisting the ghost type, but but regardless, Mandibuzz is more but this is not enough for it to remain a plus. Yeah, okay, I think that's the best way to put it. Like, Mandibuzz is still a good Pokemon, but it's not amazing anymore. It's not like a staple on balanced teams. Like, for example, you saw it on like 90 million percent of balanced teams in World Cup, but now it's it's more like, you know, 15, 20% of those teams, which is still a lot. It's still great, but it's not amazing. So yeah, Sobro is a fine pivot. That has great physical bulk, but it struggles with a plethora of common attackers, such as Urshifu. Rillaboom, Magnezone, and um, Aegislash, all of who are all improving in the current metagame. Nobro has been a fringe pick on balance teams over the course of OT and likely will surge up again once the metagame grows more stable. But for now, it is overwhelmed. So yeah, basically, Sober is kind of like the odd Pokemon out right now because everyone's like, oh my god, this Pokemon's gonna be so good. It got teleport as regenerated, blah, 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 blah. but no, here's the thing. The thing with Slowbro is it actually loses to so many common attackers, especially with Cinderace being gone. And it's just like really rough. It doesn't even have the ability to like resist Flash Cannon from Choice Specs Me Urine anymore, which is a cool little thing it had going for it. But yeah, no, like a lot of Pokemon you see in Hyper Offense teams, it just really struggles with. And it does do well against Excadrill. It does do well against Ushifu Rapid Strike. It does do well against Halucha and Cloyster, but that really isn't enough to justify usage of it. The Future Cyclist Teleport bit is still pretty solid, though, so maybe try it out there. But yeah, no, it's still hard to justify. Um, Odom, he is still a solid option, but with a lot of overwhelming competition offensively and less Pokemon it can wall given the recent ban of Magirna and even Cinderace it is harder to fit onto teams justifiably. Especially with the metagame shifting away from balance teams and so much as Rotom Heat is best on those teams. So yeah, unfortunately Rotom Heat is best on balance teams with like Nasty Plot plus Pain Split or Toxic sets. And those sets just aren't able to fit on as many teams right now due to how overwhelming and how polarized the metagame is. The extremes just aren't friends to Heat, unfortunately. And because of that, it's probably best to try out other options and other team types. Still, those teams are very viable. I want to make sure to note that it's not like unviable or anything. It's just not at the same high as it was before. Um, Chansey is simply seen as a lesser option. Option. Or as a less effective practical option when compared to Blissey, who, which can use heavy duty boots and has access 
and, and can abuse teleport with more with more um, momentum because of this. Yeah, I think that's just way I put it. Also with trick and knock being so disruptive, it is hard to justify using Chansey as much regardless. So yeah, Chansey has just fallen from grace a ton this generation. Item displacement so huge, with there being no Z, stone, Z, Z moves and Mega Stones, Trick and Knockoff are super great right now. And that means that displacing items like Eevee Light and Chansey or really any other Eevee Light uses no you is really hard to, you know, like maintain those items being in position. That coupled with the fact that Boots being able to be run on Blissey means that, you know, it is a lot more practical because the stealth rock and spikes are often up. So yeah, it goes a long way for sure. Marowak, Lola simply needs to do too, too much to justify using it. It lacks the bulk and speed. It also struggles to pick between two abilities. Ultimately, nobody not many people like it as an option outside of gimmicky styles such as trick drum teams anymore, unfortunately. However, there is still some viability on those archetypes. I don't want to say gimmicky outside of fringe styles. Yeah, fringe, because it's not really gimmicky. It can work on a consistent basis. It's just, you know, it's not used that much. So yeah, that's the best way to put it. Marowak just isn't as good as it was before. It's really not able to check. If it doesn't, McGear being in the tier is a huge plus for it, but also like it doesn't really check things. It doesn't really check Volcarona, you know. Clef fronts knock off or trick a ton, which doesn't bear well for it. The only good thing for it is that we're seeing more corporate scrummy than Mandibuzz, but even then, it's, you know, it's just not great for it because a single U-turn and then like can, abuse, can be abused, yeah. But um, wash simply does not have as much, much of a place in the tier as it once did. No such stats are as common, and while it can check a decent pool of Pokemon, it faces stiff competition among Rotom Heat, fellow water types, and a plethora of solid hits and walls ranked higher than it. Okay, that's Rotom Watch. Just, just unremarkable Pokemon, unfortunately, and Strolax probably is not worth using when every stall team has his Toxapex and every offensive team can easily run it, so it has fallen another sub rank, unfortunately. Okay, yup, this is us going through it. I'm just gonna put a preview again so you guys can see that lined up really quickly. You could like pause the video here if you wanna like read through it all, but I just went through it, so yeah. Again, Mandibuzz, Slowbro, Rotom Heat. Chansey, Marowak Lola, and Rotom Wash all just dropped. So let me know your thoughts on these viability rankings. It's gonna be up, up, dope. He's gonna be updated, and I'm gonna post this momentarily. But thank you guys so much for watching this. And if you guys are interested in leveling up your game and improving a bit, definitely check out Jamvad's book. I gave it a read. It's great. The link will be in the description below. Click on that link, and it's gonna be about 20 bucks to get that book. Nice website he has outlining as well. So yeah, definitely give that a uh, look into if you'd like. And anyway, have a great day, guys. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. All right, peace out. Bye.